today we're going to take a look at object detection with Arduino and Batango, and soon you can control your own 6DOF robotic arm. Simply place something in front of the sensor and the robotic arm will move that object to another location. In the previous video we had a setup using a button activated arm, now we're just uh, going to modify it a little bit and we're going to have an object activated arm and all the parts and pieces are the same except for a couple modifications. We'll be replacing the button with the HW201 object detection sensor. This module has three pins. There's an output data pin, there's a VCC pin that operates on 3.3 volt to 5 volt, and it has a distance range of 2 centimeters to 30 centimeters. You can adjust that distance range with this potentiometer here with the yellow circle around it. This is where the IR receiver and emitter is located. This is your power LED and this is your object detection LED. In this video we're going to modify our previous project so let's click on open a project. If you didn't see that video check the description for the link and we're going to go up here and open a previous save. So we're going to open that up and it should bring it up. This is exactly what we worked on in the last video. If you recall this is the 3D model of the robotic arm that we built here and we uh, gave it life here in the animation section. Let's go to animation and we created all these keyframes to make it work seamlessly. So we're going to click on graph and we're going to adjust the servo arm. We're going to adjust the movement of a robotic arm. If you remember last time we were stacking blocks with a button press. This time we're going to be picking up an object and setting it at another location using object detection. Since we've been using Arduino to operate our robotic arm, we want to go back to using the software to operate our robotic arm. So we need to upload the Botango driver again. So let's go back in here, set this up, select our port, and then uh, down here you see that you need to turn the master. The master is not live, so we need to turn the master on. So let's go up here to status and turn master on. And now we can go back to the drivers tab and upload Botango driver, even though you've already done it. Upload it again. And make sure your port is selected and just go ahead and upload it. This is the way I've always done it, so if there's another way, I'm happy to uh, to hear that. But this is what I do each and every time I switch from Arduino to Botango software. Okay, I'll switch back to the other screen here. I'm going to upload Botango driver. I'm using Arduino Uno, and it should just take just a moment to do. And it is done. All right, everything looks good. And so let's switch back to the animate tab here so we can adjust our servo motors to get our arm to, to pick up the block of cheese and set it at another location anytime an object is detected which it will be this block of cheese it'll pick it up and set it off to the right now before we see any real-time adjustments let's go ahead and turn the motors back on remember to hold on to your robotic arm if you don't have it secured to anything once all the motors are back on click on animate and now we can adjust the uh, robotic arm in real time as you can see, this is our previous animation. Before we create our new animation, I'm going to set the object, which is a piece of cheese here, a flexible cheese, so that it's easy for the gripper to grab. I'm going to set that right in front of the avoidance obstacle avoidance sensor or object sensor, so that when when it detects an object, it'll reach down, grab it, and move it to another location. I want to set everything up before I start making the uh, positional adjustments for the uh, robotic arm. I'm going to go back to the software here, back to the animation. I'm going to select graph, and I'm going to work with one motor at a time. And I'm going to adjust this graph in one second increments would probably be best. So I'm going to shorten this, just like we did last time. Now I'm going to let this play out and see exactly where it turns the arm to. Okay, now I'm, I want to make small adjustments to make sure that it turns toward the item that I'm picking up. So I'll just move this up and down just as we did last time. And I'll do each motor this way so that it goes to the proper position. If you don't like working with a live moving robotic arm this way, there is another way to set the animation. And I'll show you in just a second. This is what we have done so far, just working with little segments at a time. Now we're going to click on the default animation gear up here and we're going to edit the animation clip duration to 8 seconds because that's really all I need. And when you do that, it will trim the rest of the video so that uh, you'll lose anything after that. So let's go ahead 
and copy these keyframes and then paste them at the end at eight seconds because I like to end the animation where it begins. That way when it starts up again, it doesn't jerk real violently back into place and start over. So it's already there in that position that you want to start in. So we'll go ahead and paste those keyframes here. And then we'll extend out this uh, box here so that we can play the whole animation. And for each motor, we'll make some adjustments at the end of the animation to make a more smooth transition. We're going to put the block in place here and make sure all the wires are out of the way. When I click play on the Batango software, the animation is good and the positions seem to be accurate. I'm pretty happy with it, so the next step would be to export the code and modify that code to include some object detection so that Arduino can run this when an object is detected. So let's go ahead and make sure all these are checked, all the servo motors in your default animation. We're going to export the default animation, click next, and we're going to export, we're going to select a folder to export it to. And once you've done that, go ahead and open that folder. There's another way to add keyframes if you don't have any yet. What you can do is manipulate the 3D image on the screen here, and that's what we're going to do. We're in the Animate tab, and this is a 3D image. We're going to go down here to the bottom. You see I have no keyframes. I'm going to select the joint, and I come over to the 3D image once that's selected. And then you can rotate that joint in this 3D screen, and say I want to start with the, the joint here. And you see a keyframe just popped up, and it'll put it in position for me. And say so you want to rotate a little bit and see where it is in position, you can do that. So it'll create that for me. And let's move forward to, let's say, one second. And I can put it in another position. And it'll automatically set up another keyframe and connect it for me. And let's pull it forward, I don't know, another three seconds or so. And then I want to lean it back. I want it to be in that position. And then maybe we'll go one more here. We'll just lean it forward a little bit. And then it creates another keyframe. And you can do that with each of these joints and you can create your own animations in here without actually turning on your motors and your Arduino and all that. So you can do this before you even connect it. I somehow deleted joint number one. I wanted to turn it a little bit in my animation. So let's just add this joint, add joint track, and you'll see it flashing up here. Just click on that. I've added keyframes for the other motors and I'm gonna add one for this. I wanna twist it a little bit here. I want it to start out maybe a little uh i don't not straight ahead maybe turn it a little bit so we'll go over here to the 3d image and turn it you see the keyframe move and then maybe right here turn it turn it a different direction and you see how it's connecting it's connecting the keyframes for me here creating the animation it's just another way to create the animation a little bit easier I guess for some people but I, I do like to watch the actual robot arm do the work so whatever you prefer but this is a way okay we're in the folder I, I downloaded this zip file for the previous video and I went ahead and copied it into this folder I'm going to extract all and here you can see the three files that were exported from Botango software and these two files are just Botango animation files once this is done extracting we're going to copy those three files that were exported from Botango software and drop those into the Botango Arduino driver folder. Now it's time to open the Arduino file. And here's the Arduino IDE. And once the code pops up here, we're gonna modify a few things from the exported code. We're first gonna to go to our, the Botango Arduino config tab and uncomment the define use command stream because we're using Arduino. And now we're gonna go back to the INO tab and we're gonna add some code for object detection. So here's what we've added. We've added some variables here at the top. You'll see three of them. The first one is a sensor pin and that just tells you where the IR pin is located on the Arduino. It's at pin 11. Then there's an animation running. It's a boolean variable and that tracks whether animation is currently running. There's also a last sensor state variable and this stores previous state of the sensor and that'll be either high or low and that helps detect changes in sensor input. Now in the setup, we set the sensor pin as an input, and then you want to be sure to include this Botango core Botango setup because that will initialize the um, animation that we exported from Botango software. In the loop, if you look at line 20, uh, this line reads the current state of the sensor pin, 
and the sensor, if it detects something, there will be a value and it will be either high or low. Now this section indicates whether an object has been detected and it does that by checking the sensor state, whether it's been changed from high to low. And if an object is detected, the flag will be set to true and the animation is started using Batango Core here at line 27. Now this line updates the last sensor state variable with the current sensor state and it just prepares it for the next iteration of the loop. The next thing we do is upload the code to Arduino and we place our toy block of cheese here in front of the sensor. Object is detected, arm picks up and places it where we set it to be placed in the Batango software. Here's another look at it. You can see the LED light come on on the sensor when the object is detected. Hopefully this helped you see how to add a sensor to your Batango exported code. And Batango is really good at smoothing out the motions of the motors for animation and there are many other devices and sensors that you can continue to add to your Batango project after you export the code. Thank you very much for watching. If this was helpful to you, be sure to like the video by clicking the thumbs up. Also consider subscribing if you enjoy this type of stuff. And I will see you again with another video.